Hey gang, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of The Fishing Teacher and thanks a lot for checking today's video out. Uh, it's first of May today, so we're gonna be talking about what the fish do in May. Gonna sort of give you guys a breakdown, a little bit of an understanding about what fish do this time of year. And one of the things I like to do here on the channel in correlation with the lures we're talking about is I wanna try to give you a basic understanding of the seasonal movements and seasonal patterns of fish. And this is one thing that everybody really needs to pay attention to because one of the things I found out about doing these videos is most people don't pay much attention to videos like this. When I'm talking about, you know, sort of being a student of the fish a little bit, everybody's wanting like a secret color of lure or secret lure, that type of stuff. But just bear with me on this and pay attention to these videos when you're talking about seasonal patterns because it's really going to help you out a lot. So real quick guys, before we get started, I just wanted to, to remind all of our channel members that I'll put my email address in the description of this video. Uh, feel free to shoot me your fishing questions and um, if anybody's interested in becoming a member of the channel, uh, just go to my the Fishing Teacher homepage and click the little join button. It gives you all the information for that. Much appreciated. Okay, the for the most part, it, really it depends on what part of the country that you're in, but for for the majority of the country, May is sort of signified is sort of signified by being the the first true post spawn month as far as when the majority of the bass are pretty much done spawning. There may be late spawners, but they're pretty much wrapping up the spawning cycle by May in most parts of the country, with the exception of maybe the northern tier states. If you guys are fishing up in New York and Wisconsin, Minnesota, that type of stuff. Uh, obviously you're a month or two behind, but for the majority of the country, like anywhere mid part of the country or south, uh, it's sort of wrapping up right now. So here's sort of what happens, and here I want to sort of give you guys a, a brief foundation without going into extreme de detail. I sort of want to, you know, touch the surface on a little bit. But for the most part, once fish get done spawning, um, bass specifically, is there's a couple different things that they do. The first thing they do is um, the females are the first to leave the nest usually or, or the bedding areas. And they, you know, maybe you'll hang around a little bit close to the bedding areas and they'll gradually start moving out to deeper water a lot sooner. But the males will hang around sooner. They're the ones that actually protect the nest, protect the eggs, guard the fry, that type of stuff. So they, they're gonna be in that water longer. But there's a period of a, of a couple weeks after fish spawn that they don't really move very far. They sort of stay in the same area. So say for example, if you've got a cove that you've been fishing and you've been, and you know some fish have been spawning in there, you can keep fishing those coves a lot of times, but just move to maybe just a little bit deeper water within the cove or move to some thicker cover. Because one of the first things, two things they do is they move to maybe available cover, it could be a dock, it could be grass or whatever, or they just pull out a little bit. Maybe just if they were spawning in three foot of water, they might back out and move out to six or seven foot of water in those same areas. Now, after a couple weeks, um, they start making a transition into their uh, late spring, early summer patterns. <clears throat> and this, a lot of this, what happens here, it depends on the type of lake that you're fishing and the type of structure or cover that's available to the lake. And it also depends on the water clarity of the lake. But for the most part, there's a transition of 50% of the fish in the lake will start to move to deeper water and the other 50% will stay in shallow water. And it's sort of like, um, <clears throat> you know, some people like to live in the country and some people like to live in the city. It's the, it's the same with bass. Some bass prefer to spend most of their time in deeper water and some bass live shallow most all year long. So the good thing about it is you can target both of those. So let's talk a little bit about the shallow transition and then we'll talk about the deeper, how to catch them. The fish that stay shallow in the month of May, a lot of times are ones that are up there feeding on perch specifically because the time that May rolls around, you start having a lot of bluegills, black perch, pumpkin seeds, red ear sunfish, crappie even. You, you start having a lot of different type of fish using that shallow water in the month of May. There's the water's warming up. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of things to feed on shallow. There's mayflies coming in there. There's bugs dropping on the water. There's, 
you know, just a lot of stuff going on, a lot, a lot of activity in shallow water. So those fish are going to live there all the time. And one of the top techniques for fishing in the month of May is with some type of a topwater lure. Now, it, it could be a buzz bait, it could be a popper, it could be a walking bait, it could be a frog. You know, it depends again on your lake. But give, for, if you're concentrating on those shallow fish, give these topwater lures a try. And it's not just that they'll work like if it's cloudy or early in the morning, they can work all day long in the month of May. It's a really good way to catch them. Um, but for the most part, you know, you're gonna go back into these areas where you think the fish have been spawning and just start fishing in there. If there's overhanging trees, fish the shade. If there's some lay downs, fish that. If there's some boat docks, hit the boat docks. Whatever's available in there, just uh, stay in those, in that water, you know, less than four foot deep. Now, if you got a lake that has um, any type of decent water clarity, like water clarity over three feet, you're also gonna have half of those fish start to move out to deeper water. And the first places they go to are like the main lake and secondary points. So say for example, if you're back in a big creek arm of a lake and you've been catching fish in April, back in the cove spawning, Try fishing some of the secondary points leading out of those coves. Some of the, those are going to be some of the first places they go to. A football head jig fished out on them. A, a deep diving crankbait can be really good. A swim bait just depends on the water clarity. And also what happens is if you have real clear water, say if you got water visibility of over five feet, um, there can be a lot of fish suspending out there. And it's another good place to fish those top water lures in that clear water if those fish are suspending. Now, some of the lakes across the country, like if you're fishing some of the TVA lakes, river lakes that have current, those fish will actually move out deeper, quicker than a man-made impoundment. That's why a lot of you guys that fish some of the TVA lakes, lakes like Lake Chickamauga and, and Kentucky Lake, you know, in May, a lot of those fish are already out there on the ledges, so you can catch them doing that. But anyway, my suggestion is, guys, is... um just realize that there's two different types of fish that you can catch in the month of may you don't have to fish deep you don't have to fish shallow you can fish however you want to fish but um just you know remember those two things top water lures shallow if you're going to fish them big crankbaits uh, football head jigs wobble head jigs out on the points if you want to fish a little bit deeper and that's two of the best ways you can catch them in may so hope it helps we'll see you guys later